Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. And this is Alpha Quadrant 6. We are a science fiction review show, and sometimes we do an after show for Star Trek Discovery. We just got through watching Season 2, Episode 5, Saints of Imperfection. This is last week's episode, but we were out of town, and we didn't get a chance to see it until just now. Uh, we'll be, we will be back for this week's show right after this. We're going to go watch it, and then we'll be back, and we'll, we'll live stream that as well. What did you guys think of this episode? Still no Spock. <laughs> uh, total head fake. Total head fake, oh, right? They literally have Spock on the end of, like, it's like a pinata. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I mean, you know, this was it. This was really the last episode where they get to do that before yeah. it becomes silly and anticlimactic. Like, yeah. no one cares. If you, if you try to string that shit out too far, yeah. then it's like, oh, who cares anymore, you know? Yeah, or, I feel like... Or his entrance better be... Epic, and you know, it's going to be good. It's not going to be so grandiose. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like they, they, the writers were like, we really got to build this. We got to make such a big yeah, deal out of it. Go too far. But I, it, it, it scares me that they might not bring them on. Like I'm starting to be like, all right, oh, five boy, episodes in, we're halfway, almost halfway through the season. No Spock, and it's all been Spock. Everyone's talking yeah, I know. Spock, Spock, Spock. Next up, ep next episode, tonight's episode. I don't think it's going to be a Spock episode. No, they, they, you know, they, they got to think about what they're doing. Yeah, with. I know. You know, I what know. I mean? it's Spock. <laughs> um, so uh, the, this is like the two main plot lines of this of this episode. One was Section Thirty One, yeah. which I thought was great. Yeah, I love fun. everything about Section Me Thirty One. That's I'm my really, favorite section. I'm really looking forward to that as its own. Uh, it's its own series. You know, I, I, I like, like all, the captain. I, I like the I captain. I like cool. the cast. Um, it's a little, you know, so the uniforms are all black. It's yeah. a little too on the nose. You know, a little yeah. too on the nose in terms of, oh, we're the dark, you know. Yeah, they're wearing ages. bike leathers. You yeah, know? They're like, they, they should, I like it. I like it. It's, yeah, it's, it's fine, but I'm just saying it's a little too on the nose. <laughs> yeah, a little too obvious. But uh, I love their ship. They have. You know, they have advanced technology, right? Like, How about that asteroid fake out? Come yeah, on, that, that was awesome. And they had the communicator on the, the, yeah. the, uh, on the, right. the emblem. Right. And I like that Pike, you know, because Pike knows the other captain, they used to yeah. know each other. Pike is like kind of like us as the audience member. Pike is like, hey, what's with that communicator? <laughs> that, ship, that ship was an asteroid. What the hell's going on here? Like, he's actually <laughs> behaving the way someone would. Like, a, a captain would think... I know all the details. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then I did like the face-off between him and the other captain where, you know, Pike is a straight-laced... He's like Captain Kirk. Yeah. Like, he's a Boy Scout. Yeah, he, he's a Boy Scout. He's yeah. straight-laced. Yeah. Captain he's doing, America. Doing everything, yeah, doing everything by the book. And this other guy, his friend, the, he has to straddle a line. Yeah. And they had a, a moment in there when they were facing off and they were like... All right, well, I guess I understand, you know. The yeah. other guy's like, you got to understand where I'm coming from. And Pike's like, all right, I, I get it. But, yeah. but Pike, on his face, he had this awesome expression yeah. on his face where he was like, I don't like it. I don't like this. It's this is not cool yeah. because it's not the Starfleet that he wants. You know what I mean? Right. And Georgiou's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, what did you guys think of her? She's, She's great. a snake, man. She, she, I love how like, you try to insult her and she, you can't insult her. <laughs> you know, like Michael says, you go back to your den of viper. And she goes, Tss. Yeah. You, know, you can't insult her by calling her bad and evil. She knows exactly right. how and bad you, she is. Can you imagine the curses they have in the mirror universe? Oh, forget they about it. La they laugh at our curses. <laughs> really? That's the best you got? <laughs> but she, she also you know, is so good at like, not yeah. answering questions and giving... She's yeah. good at not giving information. Mm -hmm. And there was that scene with Pike where the, he's like trying to suss her out. Like, hey, you know, I, I knew about you. And I was like, kind of like, yeah. in a way, like he looked up to her. And he, you could tell that he, something wasn't right. Yeah. And she just wasn't answering questions. She was answering everything with a question. And that does make sense because in the mirror universe, you would be so protective oh, of information. So God, she is yes. a creature of that other universe. Yeah, and right. We have to you know, keep remembering that. And I think they're pulling that off. So what we're seeing right. so far, I really, really like. I'm looking forward to that. Her that arc is going to be... Her arc is going to be fascinating because she's a product of the mirror universe. At the very end, she's telling uh, Michael, like, I've, I've had your life in my hand a dozen times, yeah. meaning that I could have killed you at any time Plenty of times, and I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to trust me. You have to have faith in me at some point. So, with her, you got to assume that she wants to take over the galaxy, right? That her yeah. ultimate goal, take over the galaxy, right? You got to just assume that, and you'll be and you'll be safe. But are they? You know, she. You know, she can be impacted by mm -hmm. by making friends, and there, she can have a little bit of an arc. And, and she may find right? that this is a good place for her to be. You know, here in this side, maybe. Yeah. You know, we'll there, there's two nothing ways to look at me, it. Really, at this point, I agree with Bob because. You're thinking, you know, this is a this is a creature of um, domination. Yeah, like battle and domination, and uh, exactly. Are you saying she's a dominatrix? <laughs> so, 
it would be kind of weird to think that her, her ambition goes all the way from like being in charge of Starfleet, truncated all the way down to being a second mate. And cool, a black ops deal. Mm -hmm. but So I think we have a lot more surprises in yeah. store for us about it. Of course, you don't bring that but character she's in. She's having fun, though. Yeah. And Ash Tyler, I think, is a great character yeah. as well. And there, He's going to be in the black ops it, yeah, the series. I said to Steve right when this episode ended, like, it, it buttoned up nice, didn't it? You know <laughs> it, I mean? it does. They it brought Ash back. Up. The doctor is alive and he's back. And, you know, they're putting the band back together, man. You know, they're, yeah. they're just... Well, the, now you go into the second plot line, which was rescuing Tilly from this, the yeah. mycelium network, which was really contrived and hand-waving, I think, in terms of the writing. It was fine. I mean, I... I <laughs> Jazz hand-waving? Yeah, yeah a Not quite bit. that bad, but it was... The Tilly actually, you know, I've complained about her in the past. <laughs> I like I Tilly that. when she's being serious. I like when the stakes are yeah. high with her, and she's... She, and I like, you know, one of my favorite scenes in the whole episode was when Tilly... Was, what was the other girl's name? May. May, yeah. When yeah. Tilly tells May, I am going to get out of here. Like, Tilly was being very forceful and saying, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to just abandon me here. I'll get myself out of here. Like, yeah. Very self-reliant. That's a very good side of the character. Yeah, as we said, Tilly needs an arc. Yeah. And, and we, I think, I hope that we were seeing some of that this episode, where she is more serious, she is stronger. You know, she has to evolve beyond comic relief. Right. And so I, like, I liked her this episode. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, we, they brought back Dr. Culver, you mm -hmm. know, and the explanation for that was a little strange. Yeah. Something to do with the second law of thermodynamics and energy. It's like, okay, just bring him back. You know, you, you don't have to give us that kind of a lame well, explanation for it. it. I call that kind of ham hockey. Yeah. When they're like, <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, you can't neither create, uh, uh, sorry, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. destroyed. Okay. What about information? No, yeah. don't give me but, they, so, but they said it twice. So like the first time they said it, it was a setup for the second time yeah. when they needed to say it. So they're like pri priming the audience yeah. to like, oh yeah, we get it. Well, you know what? We're more sophisticated that today yeah. as opposed to back in the late 60s yeah sure you might want to give a little bit more da data yeah. about that like, it seemed a little retconny rather than it, were they planning that the whole time I think ah, it would have had yeah, a little yeah. bit of a better oh yeah a little yeah. bit more foreshadowing a better explanation this it felt a little retconny and didn't I didn't buy it the explanation to be, to be honest with you but okay you know if we look past that it was fine I mean the, you know, the ship halfway into the mycelium network and you know, the black ops ship had to cool. pull them out. It was all, yeah. it was it was good action, you know, for a Star Trek episode. But so I it, is, it was fine. It's always those the little decisions yeah. the writers make I know. that are disappointing. Like they just they're not quite over the hump of, mm -hmm. of making it spectacular. Like mm -hmm. it's like ah, it's a little weak. I you know, <laughs> seeing a little bored without seeing through it a little bit. It was very predictable. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that Star Trek always has the like, let's join our hands together and sing the Welcome Ooh, by Somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, the Star Trek is usually successful. It needs to be successful for it to be Star Trek. Mm -hmm. But to me, it just felt like everything was. I never fear anything when I watch the, these episodes. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I want I want to be a little bit more like tense about it. Right. And now yeah. that they brought somebody back from death, yeah, you got to be careful when you do fear. that. That's a real so difficult thing. To that's pull a that's off a well. trope that you got to yeah. use yeah. very very lightly. Another element I really loved. I adore Captain Pike. Yeah, I adore He's him. Great. He's great. He's he, fantastic. He told Tyler. Do not talk on my bridge. Yeah. Only talk when you're talked to. And I like that. You don't talk when I talk. Yeah, you do not talk. But the point is that he, he was, you know, there, this is an element to the captains that we need to see. Sometimes you need to be an ass. Yes, he needs to be the captain. And there was a lot of yeah. that happening in this episode. You know, like he walks, like one scene where he walks into his ready room and the hologram of the yeah. other captain, that, the captain of Section 31, is in there, and you could just see on Pike's face, like, what the hell is going on? Like, yeah. he was kind of almost pissed off that that guy they was They had there. good dialogue, too. I yeah. noticed that it was really good dialogue between the two of them. And sometimes that's a weak point in just writing in general, screenwriting, but in, in Star Trek, you know, sometimes the writing a little, as you say, ham hockey. But uh, they had, you know, like, I liked what they were saying. It was thoughtful, it was in character, it was really mm. well written. Yeah. It stood out for me, like how well their characters interacted. I hope that's a sign of what we're going to be seeing on the other spinoff. Yeah, me you too. Know. Now, I'll, I'm going to make a, a statement that I've been thinking about quite a bit because I, I, I judge new captains by me comparing them to all the other captains mm -hmm. in, in Star Trek. Sure. I'm starting to feel like Captain Pike is one of my favorite captains. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, to me it's Captain Kirk, Captain Picard, and now Captain Pike. He's my top mm -hmm. third captain really? in the series. Really? already? Yeah. I can't imagine him replacing the other two as far as, like, my appreciation. 
But I just think he's great. I think the actor is great. I think he's serious. I think he can be comical when he needs to be. He you he's know, in the sweet spot. He's intense. He's in the sweet yeah, spot. But he's in, yeah. he's in, he's in but a he could, But there is a funny aspect which mm -hmm. you need. You always need a little bit of humor mixed in. He's got that. So and yeah. he's got the nostalgia angle as well because he, he, he's he's Captain he, Pike. Pike it's goes Captain way Pike. back. Yeah, he's one of the coolest captains of all time. You know? Right, right. So overall, I I feel like they brought up the quality a couple notches in this episode. Mm -hmm. The writing still needs to be tightened up, and they have to be. All right, this is another observation that I made before, but it, the, the, this episode was riddled with crying and with too much talking like i like you saying there's no crying in star trek yeah there's no there, really it's too much like you know like i they have to hit this tone you said it steve yeah. many times there's a balance you can't have too much of any of these things but there was a moment in the episode i can't remember oh i know exactly when it was when they were all going back to get into the mycelium yeah cubby that they have to get into where he where he actually connects to the ship yeah and they were going to bring back the doctor and everything was going to wrap up and it they stopped and the serious music comes and it's like You've only got a minute and a half left. Remember that I said yeah, yeah. I got you three minutes. They dragged they that spent last minute. Five out. minutes. Yeah. It was way too long. Yeah. It was too. It was too emotional. You lost like, the sense of urgency. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know, well, we could hang out here forever. I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, my head's on a counter, and I'm yeah. waiting for like you know, the yeah. captain to be like, "What the hell are you guys doing?" They blew that pacing. Yep. They hit the they brakes totally, too much. They hit the brakes. And there's too much of that puppy dog. Like everyone's like. <laughs> it's like, stop! It's Star Trek! Stop! No, we well, don't do that. Spock cried and played those stepchildren. Bob, right. They pull that. They, they, you can only really pull things out of, your, out of your back pocket like that once. Yeah, I agree. And you know? I, I, well, I like Michael a lot as a character, Michael Burnham. She seems to be brooding way too often. Yeah. She needs a little bit more range in terms of her That's emotional. True. You know. I agree with yeah, that. It's, what about it's the, always like, it's she, like one or two notes she's got. Yeah. She was like trained a like a Vulcan, right? She's supposed to be. But more she's serious. Human. But she's I know she is, but the point is that she... Look, Steve, you're human, and you're not the most emotional person yeah. out there. You know what I mean? Like, humans could be extraordinarily Vulcan-like, right. and she should be very Vulcan-like. I think I mean, she's trying to pull it off, but... But she's crying on everybody's shoulder. It's like everything is hitting her on the chin. It's like, I want... I need her to but be... But that poor girl has been through so much, <laughs> Come <Jay>. on. <laughs> she had this... Like, Ash came back. She had to deal with that. Her brother is being hunted down. Look, yeah, I know it's very. It, there's a lot going cats on. Cats and dogs living together. I liked it when she kept that face on yeah. yeah. uh, George O. That scene where she didn't yeah. uh, didn't lower her. I mean, that that is it. Like I love non-dialogue. Those little like touches. Those little you, touches. Yes, yeah. where you, it conveys everything. Like man, you know. I what think she we're stands. still we're still building. Again, they're not quite there yet, but I'm I'm enjoying it. This is I think this is a solid episode. There were definitely problems, significant problems with some of the writing. You have to look past some of the hand waving explanations. Yep. But I enjoyed. The episode, they got to bring out Spock. I know, I know, yeah. it's not going to be tonight's episode, but oh, they can't, they, they can't delay it too much longer. I agree, and I, I, I think being critical is important because, I, first off, I think out of all the reviews that are out there, and I watch a lot of reviews in general, mm -hmm. but I do watch other Star Trek review shows, and I do appreciate the critical nature of how everyone's like, look, you know, there's a standard, you know? Like, yeah. Because I think the producers and the people, they should be watching these reviews to understand what general audience thinks. I mean, we are general audience, you know? Yeah. Like, we're just fans of Star Trek and, and science fiction in general. They need to hear this feedback. We can't whitewash it. A lot of people are not happy with, with mm -hmm. season two of Discovery. I'm reading online, you know, I get on Reddit, you get yeah, on yeah, I read it as well. bulletin boards and forums, you know, like, people are like, what, what's going on? You know, like, we need to represent that. So I think it's okay to be critical. I'm, I'm happy to say what I like, but I'm going to say what I don't like. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, I want better writing. With Game of Thrones, man, Game of Thrones yeah. threw the scales way yep. in the direction. Now, great for us, because we're the audiences. But the standards are getting high, and they, yeah. have to, they have to come up with it. All right, I think we're, our audience wants to go see tonight's episode. Yes, we'll Just see you back right in we'll 45 see. minutes. Yep, we'll see you then.